Okay.
sounded like a chopper there for a second. <laughs> He's been working on that like a dog. Yeah, he's getting it down, man. Mm -hmm. He's got that bag. Look at that. Look at that. Mm -hmm. I told him we're going to go to the slope with that thing. Oh, man. You know, if it had more wing area, it would probably be gliding real good. Yeah. Pretty good. See, he's got to time it on that stop. Freezer. Okay, the video that you're looking at right now is video that was taken with a camera set on the backbone and the reason that I'm doing it this way is for the simple fact that I was not able to download the video and use it in the editing program for some kind of corruption that was going on with it but yet I'm able to play it in a viewer so what I'm going to do here is play it and uh, the reason for the video was to see if the carbon was flexing during flight and it's pretty clear that the carbon is actually flexing during the flight because you can see a slight uh, curvature here uh, as well as on the other side whenever that uh, comes into view and uh, there you can see it you can see the curve right here notice the curve and uh, the the whole idea was to see if in fact the tail was flexing due to the airflow over it and it's to me it's really clear that is that it is flexing and now the next question is okay is it does it flex more when you're going downwind versus going upwind and so what I was going to try to do here is to figure out if I can tell based on what the tail is doing whether I'm going upwind or downwind. Now just to be clear the wind was coming from east to west and right now the model is flying uh, actually now I'm going to be making a turn and we're going to be heading uh, let's see, I'm trying to get a bearing here to figure out which way it's actually headed right now. It is headed, okay that's the barn, so it's headed, now it's going to turn and go back um, into the wind. So now I'm traveling upwind. Um, yeah, and actually I'm getting ready to land. So we want to watch the tail as it lands and see if it in fact raises back up after landing. 
So you can see that the tail is actually hovering down about half the screen and now it's landed and the tail is actually standing straight up or up more at an angle versus what it was doing when it was flying. So notice that right now the tail is actually covering the whole screen here and if I back this video up uh, here you can see that the tail is actually only covering about half of the screen so it's laying back somewhat and we will go back to the beginning here you can see I'm getting ready to, to launch and the tail is actually way up so um, there I've just launched uh, no I have not launched yet I was uh, I guess the wind was hitting it so you could see how, how much the wind is actually affecting the tail. That's just the wind blowing on the tail. I have not launched it yet. So um, you can see the tail does actually lay back quite a bit. So once I launch, we'll be able to see all of this part of the screen here. There we go. There was the launch. And you can see that the tail has laid down now. This is the tail laying down. So if I pause this, and just kind of freeze frame it between um, the uh, vibrations. You can see here clearly this has an arch here and over here. So that tells me that the tail is actually flexing during the flight, which simply means that it's laying back. Uh, and I'm going to guess that it's going to be the airspeed that's doing that because obviously whenever it, uh, here you can see it's laying back, uh, it's much greater than what it was whenever I started. So um, I'm convinced that the airflow over the tail is actually pushing the tail back and uh, I am probably getting some spring out of the servo saver. So with this information here, what I'm going to do is adjust the tail whenever I fix the position on the uh, model itself without using a servo or the servo saver. I will adjust the uh, tail angle so that it's actually laid back a little bit more because it will not be able to flex as far as it is right now because I not only have the carbon flexing but also I'm sure I'm getting some flex out of the servo saver. So I will try to compensate for that and then I'll make some flights and see uh, how exactly the tail responds. So and hopefully I'll be able to throw the camera that I used here back on the model and test it with the tail in a fixed rigid position and the only flexing that would come into play would be the flexing of the carbon parts of the tail. So more to come on this a little bit later.